This video is sponsored by our patrons at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Become a patron and get early access to videos, models, and more when you join. If you like these videos and would like to support what we do, you can find the link below. Now on to the video. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a brand new dark ride that uses state-of-the-art trackless dark ride vehicles and cutting-edge projection mapping to pull riders into the world of Mickey and Friends. Through this technology and storytelling, riders will step into the cartoons and embark on a peaceful ride around the park where absolutely nothing will go wrong. While the ride took Imagineers longer than expected due to other work going on with Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, for which a How It Works video could be found in the iCard above, the ride has been an overwhelming success, with wait times posted at 300 minutes. Runaway Railway is the latest investment to make Disney's Hollywood Studios a full-day park and soon coming to Disneyland's Toontown in California. This video is extremely spoiler heavy, so this is your warning for those looking to ride spoiler free. However, if you love theme park technology and want to see how they pulled it off, then you're in the right place. So make sure to subscribe and stick around until the very end for a contest. In this video, we'll take a look at the technology of the ride including the track, location system, vehicle design, special effects and more, as well as the history of the ride. So sit back, relax, because this is how Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway works. Runaway Railway was the heavily anticipated replacement and successor to the famous Great Movie Ride that opened with Disney's Hollywood Studios in 1989. The Great Movie Ride was a showcase of legendary movies featuring countless animatronics and live skits acted out by your tour guide. Shortly after the Great Movie Ride closed, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was announced to replace the Great Movie Ride and would open in late 2019. As we'll later learn, that never happened as the group working on the new ride was needed elsewhere. Soon after the Great Movie Ride closed its doors, demolition began by ripping out every last bit of set structure. When finished, workers were left with the queue which had been spared from demolition in a large open show building that can now be used to build up the ride. However, due to the complications of Rise of the Resistance, more help was needed to assist the ride in construction, so construction of Runaway Railway was put off until Rise of the Resistance was nearly completed. In order to form the new ride, the former large screening room and the queue was divided into two smaller screening rooms. This allows rider operations to organize riders into large groups that can be led into the theater. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a trackless dark ride that utilizes blended projection mapping and moving projection surfaces to create depth within this otherwise two-dimensional world. Through extremely clever effects, the ride is able to convince riders that they've been pulled through into the world of Mickey and Minnie to take a tour through the chaotic cartoon world. Riders are led through the queue and into the pre-show where they're met with the effects to pull them in and immerse them in this modern age Mickey cartoon experience. These are how these effects work. In the pre-show, guests are herded into a screening room as they are there to see the premiere of a new Mickey and Minnie short. To increase capacity, there are actually two rooms which allows for a steady flow of guests in and out of the pre-show. The lights dim and the show begins as Mickey and Minnie head out for a picnic in the park. As they drive over a bump, a blueberry pie larges itself in the smokestack of Goofy's train, causing a large explosion. At this point, the screen explodes, sending smoke into the theater. When it clears, it's revealed that a hole has been blown clear through the screen and into the cartoon world. This effect is actually rather simple in principle. The screen in the theater is not one large piece with black borders, but is actually several smaller pieces. The white part of the screen is actually longer or taller than it appears, with the black borders hiding the damaged section on the bottom of the screen. 
The bottom black border is split down the middle to conceal more damage to the screen's border and the opening for guests. Because of the lighting though, it's very hard to tell where the split or the seam is actually. During the explosion, the white screen rises up so that the hole from the explosion is revealed and allows smoke to cover what's going on. This smoke, the even shade of white on the screen, and the distracting projection of the film is enough to make it hard to even notice that the hole didn't appear from nowhere. If the projection and smoke were turned off, you would see the damaged screen rise from the bottom and the bottom section of the border pull away from the center to reveal the opening for which guests enter the cartoon world of Mickey and Minnie. For added effect, the flaps of the screen remaining from the damage fluff outward towards the audience. The flaps are actually much thicker than they appear, which conceals linear servos built into the screen to push the back side of the screen out, causing the flaps to curl. The vehicles on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway are custom Roush trackless ride vehicles. Roush is a dark ride equipment manufacturer and has provided vehicles for Disney for rides like Rise of the Resistance. These custom vehicles don't feature motion base which allows them to move faster through the ride and makes the experience more thrilling and boosts capacity than other slower vehicles. During the loading process, the vehicles are receiving the ride path from the RCS or ride control system, which it will then execute. Unlike the typical wire guided method seen in other trackless systems like the Tower of Terror, these vehicles use RFID puck systems plus 5G Wi-Fi to understand where it is in the building. These pucks respond to the vehicle by relaying relative position data that it can then use. This is often referred to as an LPS or local positioning system. In addition, the ride adds a locomotive car to the front of the four car group where Goofy is presented to riders as the conductor of the train. This additional vehicle seats the riders and only contains the effect that it shows Goofy, which we will talk about later. These vehicles where riders sit have a simple lap bar restraint system, sound, and seat vibration. To power each vehicle, Disney employs a rapid charging battery system. You might notice that these vehicles are always positioned in the same way each time during boarding. They're positioned this way because underneath each vehicle is a charging pad they've aligned with to charge. At the end of the ride, the vehicles also dock again and charge while guests unload. When dispatched, the train proceeds forward into Runamuck Park, where we are greeted with rolling hills and flowers. Here we see the first of many projection map scenes where Disney has taken control of the environment we see. This is something that you might call normalized reality where because we don't see any real world objects during the ride, we can see the cartoon palette or coloring to be normal. Here, any moving detail is projected or actuated by motors. Any other details or parts of the set that are stationary are either painted onto the surface or built out in a cartoon style and painted in color match with black light paint designed to match the colors being projected. If the projectors were turned off, you'd see a white spot on the trees where there would be characters or moving details being projected surrounded by the rest of the scene. The projectors are 4K Panasonic projectors located far above you in the rafters. These semi-short throw projectors are designed to project onto nearby surfaces as opposed to being directly across from the surface they're being projected onto, which is not always an option in this ride. They're hidden in a booth in the rafters surrounded by black surfaces to hide them as much as possible, but if you look up, you might be able to make them out. We then move into the tunnel where Mickey and Minnie meet us in their car, accidentally hitting the track switch. Here, the Mickey and Minnie animatronics are composed of frosted spherical globes with internally projected faces. Each head is individually actuated and rides in a car that is cantilevered out from behind the wall. During a recent breakdown, we were able to see that the car contained the two animatronics that reset backwards into a maintenance room where equipment also exists to lift the system out if it needs maintenance. Now that the train has become a runaway train, the goofy front car takes a left into a bypass room while the other four cars take a right into the western scene. During operations, there are approximately 40 rider cars or 10 groups of 4 rider cars each and about 5 to 7 goofy locomotive cars. In the western scene, the cars are able to move around freely, demonstrating their trackless technology. 
The scene consists of cartoon rock work with Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto projected onto the blank walls of the room along with matching projected rocks. The projections are, again, all color matched with the rock work to blend it together. While the surfaces are technically white, the set is about 50% projected and 50% practical and painted. The cars move into the next room, the carnival scene. Here, two Mickey and Minnie animatronics are swung out in a pendulum style rig made to look like a bunch of balloons. Because of the projectors in black light paint, they are able to blend projected scenes in with static black light sets seamlessly along with moving props like the flags. The background is projected and the foreground is mostly practical. However, there's an interesting effect that we saw earlier with Goofy. When you pass Donald in the stand, you might notice that his cartoon looks very real and convincing, and when you pass it, the background moves as well. But how are they able to make a vivid cartoon appear like that while also not being projected onto a surface like the rest of the ride? Originally, the effect was believed to be a fine mesh cloth, similar to the one seen in Mystic Manor, being projected onto. However, for this effect to work, you would need to be able to project black to create certain features of a cartoon character. If you show black through a projector onto the fine mesh cloth, you would simply see right through the character in those areas and the effect would not work. While we don't know if this is 100% correct, this is our best guess as to how this effect is taking place. The majority of televisions and laptops on the market today are LCD displays, or liquid crystal. They work by having a backlight for which the LCD panel will block with certain crystals to create the image you see on it. What you may not know is that these LCD displays without the backlight are actually transparent with the liquid crystals sandwiched between the glass. These liquid crystals can carefully control how much light they let through. What we believe they've done is taken a large LCD TV and removed everything but the display panel itself and placed it in the window. Now that the display no longer has a backlight, we can see right through it if the display believes it's showing white, and cannot see through it if the display believes it's showing black. Behind the panel is a practical set that is illuminated to give the depth to the effect. Now that we have the ability to turn the screen from opaque to transparent in an instant, we need to now show colors and white as well because parts of Donald are white. Here, we believe that they are using a transparent OLED screen to create a dynamic backlight for the display. This was actually moderately showcased back a few years ago with a simple on or off switch LCD display behind the transparent OLED. But this LCD display designed to show only black and let the light from the OLED have a solid background can't show images. We believe that this screen in the ride is the next generation of this concept with the ability to show images itself, allowing the OLED to have a solid background but allow other sections of the screen to still be transparent, much kind of like an old calculator that you might have. All colors except for black are a result of the OLED screen and the black borders of the characters are the work of the background LCD display. Before moving on to the Twister Room, you might also notice a small nod to the Great Movie Ride through a poster for the Great Moving Ride. The cars now head into the Twister scene, which is another nod to the short-lived Wizard of Oz Twister scene in The Great Movie Ride. The scene is actually one of the only scenes without projections, with the Twister and props being 100% practical. As a bonus, there's also a high-speed fan blowing in the room for added effect. The cars don't stop in the Twister scene and instead head into the volcano and underwater scene. Here, a double-use set is utilized to be seen as rocks at the bottom of the volcano and later the rocks of the ocean. Two more Mickey Mini animatronics are perched on a rock, hiding behind a bush trying to save guests. The cars each proceed into their own dome screen pod where multiple projectors peek in through holes in the ceiling to project onto the all sides of the dome screen that surrounds the car. After a dive off a waterfall, the cars turn around to the same scene now transformed into the depths of the ocean thanks to a quick lighting change and projections. Cars then travel down the drain system into the city where Pete is busy causing havoc. In this scene, a large part of the set is practical and real, but a few sections like the view down the street and the buildings surrounding Pete are projected onto white screens. 
Pete's animatronic consists of the same internal projection face, a floating hat on a black stick, and spinning rubble pieces as he jackhammers into the ground. There are also various props that shake violently to match the jackhammering. Donald is seen again in a delivery truck using the same effect from earlier with the transparent OLED screen. This set is about 50% practical sets and 50% projections. The cars then file into Daisy's dance studio where the cars perform a short dance as an animatronic Daisy directs. This animatronic is one of the more fleshed out animatronics versus the more cartoonish ones throughout the ride. With a change in music, daisies appear behind the mirror through a one-way mirror effect. This effect consists of the one-way mirror and air gap where lights slide in and another regular mirror. From here, the cars now move into the factory scene that is the result of years of work on Disney's part. As Mickey and Minnie make their way through the factory to shut it down, their attempts to get to the shutoff are projected onto walls and onto the machinery that is also projected onto the staggered screens. When they finally pull the shutoff, the entire factory transforms into the park again. The screens that were equipment fold up into trees, smokestacks turn into street lights, and the furnace turns into the carousel, and the surrounding buildings turn into the sky. Guests are now safe and turn around to be reconnected with the goofy locomotive that rejoins guests through the bypass it took earlier and riders tour the rest of the park. This set is about 80% projected and is a demonstration of the 2.5D effect that Disney has been working on where projected surfaces are positioned and used to add depth as well as moving surfaces that help give a bit of kinetic energy to the scene. We finally see two more internally projected Mickey Mini animatronics along with a Pluto animatronic that all have electronically actuated hands and heads. The park in this finale scene is about 90% practical with only the waterways and fireworks being projections. As an added bonus, there's a barn bird that uses the same transparent OLED screen and adds a projected shadow similar to the one we saw in the holding cell for Rise of the Resistance. The train then heads back into the barn where guests can now unload and head back through the screen and back into the real world. This crazy combination of reality blending projection mapping and clever cartoon augmentation is truly one of a kind. With the ride's 40 cars, the ride manages to be a rather high capacity ride that helps alleviate the crowds waiting to ride Rise of the Resistance. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opened at Disney's Hollywood Studios and will open in the next few years at Disneyland soon and is truly something you won't want to miss. Altogether, this technology works in unison to create a seamless and thrilling adventure that has amazed and blown away hundreds of thousands and probably now millions of riders and will continue to do so for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I create these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring technology and engineering that goes into creating the rides we enjoy daily. Five gears were hidden within this video. If you spotted all five of them, comment down below the timestamps and you'll get a shout out in the next video. Thank you for joining us and we hope we've inspired your curiosity through technology and engineering. Be sure to check out our playlist of other How This Ride Works videos in the iCard above. Some of which you might like, there's a lot of them. We make educational ride models and the links to our social media where you can find additional coverage are below. If you enjoyed the video and would like to support us and get early access to these videos, you can visit my Patreon, a link for which is also below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing, welcome to Amusement Labs, and we'll see you in the parks. that truck's